I'm going to say it. I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and say it. Hot glue does not smell entirely unpleasant. I don't mind this. Nope. Yep. Alrighty then, hey guys, what's up? It is Sizzent here with a very much different video for you today. So, to set the stage, I have inadvertently become somewhat of a specialist working primarily with leather. So, when Ash LG of the CosTube community organized a skill swap whereby CosTubers could get together and teach each other different skills, I jumped at that chance. I needed some witcher swords that were made out of softer materials like foam, resin, and warbler. And my previous attempts were eh, pretty laughably bad. So I managed to convince Kayla from McNerdy Costumes and Props to teach me how to mold and cast out of silicon and resin some pommels. So without much further ado, I am going to take you along with me on the journey as I learned how to do this. Now then this was always going to be pretty involved because we're working with a lot of materials, so apologies about the video length. That one's on me. The plan as it was was to start by molding the head of the manticore out of some clay, then pouring silicon into that, using that silicon mold to cast a few pieces out of resin, which would then be identical. The plan, such as it was, was to sculpt the clay directly on top of a layer of foam core so that we could later construct a box around. And so we began by drawing our shapes and outlines directly onto that foam core. I'll just keep doing some little sketch while I'm waiting. <laughs> I think the camera caught that because I totally just dropped my pencil and then snatched it right out of midair. It was awesome. <laughs> yeah, we'll get an action replay of that right now. God, this is a really uh, involved lion face. It is. I was just kind of noticing that too. I'm like, man. Yeah, the, the 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 rest of the detail I can figure out later if we if we just figure out uh, where the where the wings should stop, I guess. Mine's coming out looking more like Predator right at this moment. <laughs> you, you you know what? I'm not entirely unhappy with this drawing of a manticore. Hey, hey there's a plus, right? But what I'm using is Sculpey. It'd be great if people could see that. So I just want like a handful to start with? Yeah, what I've got right here is like a like a golf ball size. Okay, right, so, so what am I doing with this clay now? Okay, so I'm just flattening this piece out so that I can kind of just start to get the shape of what's going to be the very outside of that manticore. So I'm just kind of getting a general shape in there and then okay. just going to stick it on the foam core here. Okay, I think I've got my first bat wing looking looking pretty good. I'm honestly I'm pretty proud of this. I got I got the That's flutes wonderful. going up there. Yeah. You know, hindsight's always 2020. I really wish I just started with the lion face and worked my way out so I'm not sitting here like, wait a minute, I covered up the lines on here. <laughs> so I think that's what I'm gonna do for this side. So okay. I'm gonna start on the Face. Yep. Well, now I've got an outline on one side, so I'll sort of um, start in the middle and work my way out. This is very, like, calming, I guess. It is. The sculpting is a lot of fun. This is great. I thought I was doing well, but now it's starting to turn into a lumpy monster. That's okay. It's not permanent. I am very pleasantly... Uh... I guess surprised is the wrong word, because I didn't actually know how it would behave, but I'm very, very much enjoying, yeah, how much I can just smear it out and hide the seams in between pieces. I wasn't expecting that. Yeah, the warble is a little less forgiving in that aspect. It definitely takes a lot more work, but it's going to be very, very strong when you're finished. It's, like, it's, just... it's, the, it's the overall appearance. Like, I get so... 
into these teeny tiny little details, but generally people are going to like, okay, so what I do is I take the piece and I hold it as far as my arm will reach. And that's as close as anybody is ever going to comfortably be to you in normal times, not even counting where we are right now. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. It's, it's helpful to take a step back too, if you're getting too into this doesn't look right or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. And there's no shame in throwing a uh, piece of plastic over it and letting it sit overnight if you're just getting super frustrated. Sometimes coming back with a fresh pair of eyes is good too. Oh my God, I totally agree. Like I 1000% agree that that is usually the best way to fix any craft project. But I never mm -hmm. do it. I, I like. I know that it's the right thing to do. But when you get stuck into it, it's like I'm too emotional to step back from it. You know? Right. You're too invested. And yeah. I, I just want to get the project done. But yeah, there's this little voice in the back of my head being like, Grant, if you step back and just take a, you know, go and take a ten minute walk, then when you come back, it'll be better. Uh, and I ignore that little voice every single time. It, it almost becomes um, determination at that point, just just rage. Yeah. <laughs> He's working on the project. Yeah, And then yeah. you do nothing to screw it up worse because you're mad. Yep. Yep, that's, that's my brand. Yep. I'm in this picture and I don't like it. <laughs> I'm sitting here looking at this and it's like, you know what, I, um, I'm going rogue. I've decided that these little detail pieces that I, I'm not about that life. So I'm making main. Ooh. <laughs> there we go. I'm just making little streaks to, to show hair. Yeah. So yeah. Did... Oh man. Your wings look great though. Like the, the, the dividing bits in between the span of the wings. Thank you. Yeah. Cause I'm sitting here nitpicking at this, trying to make it exactly like the picture. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going rogue. I give up. Yeah. yeah as long as, as long as it looks like a lion, right? Right. As long as you get the general shape down, I think, I think Geralt of Rivia would forgive me. <laughs> now, being unfamiliar with clay, I was kind of just laying the pieces down flat on the foam core and working on my sculpting. And Kayla did very gently let me know that I should be working more on bulking out the pieces in the middle to get some dimensionality and to get some depth into the piece. Yeah, that, that was a good call to sort of put some more bulk there. Yeah. Cause Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's looking that's looking like it's got a lot more sort of dimensionality now. So yeah, my plan is so realistic. Thank you. So my plan is to sort of go in, I've just got these sort of dots on the side for the main and because it looks like it's got a couple of like layers on the reference image. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna try that. <laughs> and bad. and if it doesn't work out, I'll just give up and just do one layer of main and call it a day. I think that's where I'm at too. <laughs> <laughs> Man, this is like, it is dangerous for me that I'm having this much fun with this because that's just like a whole nother set of specialty tools that I can justify buying now. Like, I really don't need to buy more tools. Oh, I feel you so much on that <laughs> I'm in this picture and I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've done the main wrong. I should have done the bottom layer first. Oh yeah, the, the bottom layer definitely putting that down first and then layering up on top of that really helps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I can save this. I can save this. I don't know, I find when I'm learning something new it's like, like the broad strokes anyone can get off of the internet. It's always just like the little bits. Just like, oh hey, you know, when you're, when you're, you know, when you're doing this sort of thing, the thumbprints really show up. So we're going to go over it with like, like with the brush with water. Like I wouldn't have thought that thumbprints would have survived the like casting process, but here we are. Oh yeah. Now I think it's important to have those, those little things that, that only come with experience that, mm. you know, I've done this so many times and messed so many ones up that I, I know what to, what order to do things in now and what to avoid. Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah, Grant. You did a good thing. Oh, you did? Yeah, I, fi I think so. So I've got the, I've got the bottom layer of the main 
Oh, I love it. And then it. there's the bat wing. So I, th I the, the ear is not tall enough. So I'm noticing that as I'm adding the extra layers to the outside, I'm, I'm going to need to bulk that up. Oh, that's not even on either side at all. <clears throat> that's all right. I can fix it. And things come out of your mouth. I'm like, God, we really are two very similar people. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love it. I love it. That bottom piece, that bottom main, uh, the, the wing part, I would recommend making that a little bit thicker because when you go to demold this, um, you want to have it as thick as possible so it doesn't crack as you're pulling it out of the mold. Oh my gosh, that is so cool. I'm really like, that happy looks like with it. That would be carved into like the side of a castle or something. Like a piece <laughs> of stone. Thanks. Like that's so great. Oh, I'm really happy with it. Oh man. And then with the sculpting part of the endeavor complete, it was time to tidy it up and clean up all of the lines. Kayla very helpfully coached me through which parts were important and what would get caught by the mold and what wouldn't. Okay, so now we're just gonna go in and like clean up any of the little scratch marks or anything you don't want in your finished product. Mm -hmm. And it's really important too, I don't know, like if, especially around here on the very bottom, where you've yeah. got little gaps in here, anywhere where the silicone might get in to where when you go to pull it out of the mold, it pulls the silicone with it. We don't oh, want that. okay. So it, it, it needs to be, we need to make sure that it's like flush with the backing so that, the, so that it's, mm -hmm. this, this is what's mm -hmm. going to be the bottom layer. Mm -hmm. And then sealed in between the pieces as well. Yeah. Yeah. So that so. like individual chunks. Now to tidy up the clay sculptures, we used small paint brushes or makeup brushes. There was a definite technique to be used to get the right amount of water on the brush to remove any of the lines in the sculpture that had been put there by errant fingers or sculpting tools. This was a technique that, I mean, look, I think I kind of picked it up towards the end. I'm just using an old makeup brush just because it has very soft bristles. You don't want anything that's too, uh, too harsh on it. Otherwise, you're going to put drag lines right in it. Do I want to be putting some water on it? Yeah, you just dip it in the water. And then what I do is I kind of rub it off on the paper towel because you don't want it set. Like you don't want it too wet. Um, you just want it wet enough to help kind of assist getting those uh, deep grooves out of there. But right, you don't okay. want to put water on it because that affects how the silicone is molded into it because when the silicone gets poured on top if there's water in the gaps it's gonna fill them out uh -huh. so um so what i do is i just kind of dip it in the water and then just rub it off on the paper towel and then just go in and kind of stroke the places that need to have the grooves or the little chunks kind of just smoothed out right okay but I'm I'm finding that I'm having the opposite problem. I think this brush is a little bit too soft. So I'm just gonna, like what I'm kind of doing is dabbing on it too, just getting a little bit of pressure behind the brush, but nothing that's gonna put little divots from the bristles onto it. So I've just kind of got it like an up and down tapping motion. But we don't want to put a whole lot of water in it. Right. Because I'm just going in through and then just kind of dabbing the excess water away when I'm finished as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I'm seeing it now. Yeah, so when I get it with that sort of dabbing motion, mm -hmm. I'm I'm seeing like the the little scratches sort of start to blend out. Oh, this is cool. Yeah. It's like there's this there's this voice, there's this part of me that just desperately wants to be able to call it done. Uh, and of course that's fighting against the part of me that is saying, "No, no, no, there's more to fix." Yep. I will sit and mess with this thing forever if I let myself. So calling it good enough is one of that's, those things where it's you know. That's a kindness that you do to yourself. Yes. <laughs> so I think I'm ready to call this complete. Alrighty. Well, the next thing you will need is your foam core and your uh, glue gun. So you're my pieces out, but I'm going to show you what I did. <laughs> well, I traced this um, onto the foam core. Mm -hmm. And so then I have this piece here and then the two longer pieces. 
and then these two pieces. And then I went for about an inch and a half for height, because these are gonna get stood up. So essentially what's gonna happen is when we fill this up with resin, um, this is, or I'm sorry, with silicone, we're gonna put the top on after that's cured. Then we're gonna flip it over and then take this piece off so that way you have everything still built into the box. That way you don't need to take the box apart. Oh! And it's it just makes it so much easier. Okay, 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 that's clever. We began assembling some watertight boxes out of foam core and hot glue into which we could pour the silicon. And this turned out to be a little bit more involved in terms of orders of operation than I had anticipated. And spoiler alert, this is a theme. Okay, so what I do is I stand up the piece that has the lion on it. Okay, so we want to stand that up and hit the edge. Yep, you just put a bead along the edge. Just butt that piece up right next to it. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. And then just hold it a couple of seconds and it should stand up on its own. And then I always do the opposite side. I think, I think it might be working. <laughs> Is that surprising? No. I always <laughs> knew I could do it. And then before you put that other side on, yeah. Don't make a complete box yet because it's a lot easier to put this together when you don't have that other one in the way preventing oh. you. You're gonna have these seams here, like caulking, and then I just use like the end of the paintbrush or whatever tool you wanna use and then just smooth it out when you get the glue in there to just you know, right. to just smooth the seam out. Okay. I mean, that's awesome. You don't even have to do that. I just do it because it makes the, the silicone mold look a little bit nicer when you pull the bottom off of it. I'm definitely going to be doing that. I'm going to say it. I'm going to I'm gonna go ahead and say it. Hot glue does not smell entirely unpleasant. I don't mind this. Nope. Yep. I've got these gross old glue sticks. Like, they're starting to turn yellow over here. Yep. I don't, I don't mind it. This is, this is nice. Yeah, it's not like the contact adhesive that just stinks up your entire house. Yeah, right. Okay, this is starting to look like a thing. Mm-hmm. And we're gonna get to the fun part next. Hell yeah. We're gonna mix some stuff. Yeah, who doesn't like mixing up a brew? I don't know, but they're crazy. <laughs> yeah, they're wrong and we're right. Exactly. Yeah, I've got I've got a bunch of the um, stringy nonsense happening over here because I keep going to spread it, like touch it with my fingers, and I'm leaving, like getting getting all of this angel hair going on. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a way to prevent that from the actual gun. Um, whenever I use the gun. If yeah. you use, the, when you get done doing your line, you just do a little, like, swirly thing, and it breaks it, and then wraps it around the actual gun so it doesn't get all over your artwork. That is a cool tip that I'm going to start doing. And then with the boxes complete, it was time for us to mix the silicon to get ready to pour in, and this I excelled at because, as it turns out, mixing two equal parts of something together is within my abilities. Oh my god, um, I think I may have bought the uh, cheap crappy stuff because the support email uh, is at hotmail.com, so that's always a good sign. Oh boy. Well, you know, if it doesn't work, we'll try it again. Should, it should be fine. I, it'll probably be fine. Let's eyeball it. So we're pouring B in. So I've got my two parts in there, so now I'll just stir them with my stirring pencil. You have both parts in there already? Yeah. Sorry, should I not have? No, no, you're good. No, I'm just, I'm way behind you. Yeah, I don't mean to brag, all right? But I'm going to brag real quick. I, I, I was one gram over the target weight, so, like, I feel pretty good about that right now. And I should have told you, too, as you're stirring, try really hard not to incorporate any air into it. But I've got a trick for that. Okay, so when you go to pour, don't pour directly on the manticore. Pour in like a corner or something and okay. let it just slowly seep up and then fill in all those cracks. That way you don't trap any ear bubbles in there. But wait. I'm waiting. 
Okay, we're also going to hold it up a little higher and then let it come out in like a ribbon because what that does is that'll pop the air bubbles as you're pouring from a higher location. It brings it out so your air bubbles pop. Oh my God. Okay, I'm not seeing any leaking out of the sides and I'm not gonna lie to you, I was really, like, that was my main concern. Is that it was gonna leak out? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm not stressed. I'm not stressing. What are you talking about? And it's a good idea to kind of tap it a little bit because if there is any air bubbles trapped on the bottom, they'll float up to the top. I don't want to get my hopes up too much, but like everything has gone way better than I thought it would up to this point, so. We're doing a really easy one too. I wasn't going to make you do anything like super complicated for your first one. Oh, Aww, like you're a very kind teacher. And now we wait. And now we wait. All right, so um, I'll, start a, I'll start a five hour timer and we'll just have some small talk. <laughs> right. <laughs> For five hours, sounds great. After letting the silicon thoroughly cure, Kayla and I met up the next day to pop the clay out of the mold and to see if anything had gone wrong with the silicon. All right, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna break the box. Open your beautiful little gifts. <laughs> oh, oh, it's coming apart. All right, so now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna rescue all of that clay out of the inside of here as best you can. Kind of just bend it a little bit, not too hard. There we go. Oh, okay, so the clay is just kind of, kind of going to break into pieces. Yeah, it's just going to crumble. Out. Okay, good. And as it turns out, something had indeed gone wrong with mine. Mine's kind of gooey. It's like leaving a residue on my finger. Well, I don't know if it's the silicone or the clay, but either way, they don't like each other and they shouldn't play together. <laughs> Duly noted. I, I don't think it's going to be an issue if we just get in there with a paper towel and just kind of clean up the gooeyness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, if that's if that's the worst thing that happens out of this, I reckon I've done pretty spectacularly. Oh, yours is really neat and tidy. Do I put the cornstarch on it now? Yeah, you can do the cornstarch now. Ah. The cornstarch, baby powder, talc powder, anything like that will work just as long as... You get that in there, and then if you were doing a two-part mold, you'd want to use mold release in between the second pour, but we're not going to go that far. So oh, like, that's yeah, 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 so all around the edge there, like all those little white dots, like you said, the powder, the powder is just totally filling up all of those little bubbles. Mm -hmm. Now, Kayla's resin was safe to mix inside, but I had to go out to my car hole to mix my stinky resin together. So, I want <laughs> to pour out how much I think I'm gonna need. Mm-hmm. And mine's a little different. It's equal weights by volume. Or I'm sorry, equal amounts by volume. So can I Yeah, I probably poured too much resin, but I'd rather too much than not enough. Exactly. Alright, and then I'm gonna wait for you because I have a three minute pot life. So essentially I have three minutes from the moment that part B touches part A to get it in the mold before it starts to harden on me. Okay, so I should just pour this in now? If you feel like it's thoroughly mixed, go for it. Alright. I'm gonna call it. I'm gonna call it that this is thoroughly mixed. Alrighty. Oh god, I believe. And I overfilled it and it's spilling off of the mold. Oh boy. That's okay, you can always fix that later. Oh, yours is changing already. Oh! That's cool. I love the cool stuff. That is exciting. It's taking longer to set up on the edges because like I said, the, the thicker the material you poured, the more heat is concentrated in the middle there. So the edges are gonna take longer to cure than the middle well. 
That's because so it's fascinating. Cool. Like that's totally the opposite to how I would have thought that it would yeah. work, right? Like it's totally counterintuitive. I know, but it's so cool. Oh, it's so cool <laughs> watching it spread out. That's awesome. Yeah. Whereas mine is going to take uh, twelve hours. Mm-hmm. So I'll uh, I'll check back in with you. I'd show you how it's turned out. Um, now, I don't mind telling you, dear viewer, that I waited a lot more than 12 hours and I met up with Kayla a few days later to remove the resin from the mold and also to get a start on making a warbler pommel on which to mount this manticore. I'm I can't hyped. wait to see that. I'm hyped to turn it out. Okay, so, so is there a trick to turning it out or do I just sort of peel it back and squeeze it? Yeah, I just kind of like pull gently on the sides. Mine's already popped out, so it, it's definitely a lot easier, but you just kind of pull gently at the sides so you don't hurt the mold. Oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. And then yeah. work it out. Yeah, I can see it. Oh, it's so satisfying. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like it's like pulling the plastic off new electronics times a thousand. Right. I think that's it. I think that's it. Oh, my. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, dude. Dude! Oh my goodness, it picked it all up and everything. And that's the, oh, it's so clear. It's just so interesting to see the different, like, so the flaws in mine, my bubbles are raised. Like, I don't think the camera is going to pick it up, but like my bubbles that are in here are raised. So that was a problem with my mold, not with my pore. Yeah. Yours are the opposite. That's super interesting. All right, well, with the warbler, so I made myself this just little circular piece of foam. It's super badly cut and just rough done because this isn't going to be a finished piece or anything for me. Yeah. Um, okay, so what you're going to want to do is cut out two um, rectangular or square pieces or how, whatever have you, whatever mm-hmm. works, and then you're going to make it bigger uh, by, like, I mean, I'm going to guess that's about a half an inch. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, at least on either side, because what you're going to end up doing is sandwiching this in the middle and making a little warbler sandwich with the foam in the middle. And don't worry, it's not an exact science. If you don't leave yourself enough, you can always piece stuff together. It's just easier to have everything all in one. So super forgiving stuff. That's good to know, because uh, as a maker, I generally require a lot of forgiveness. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm seeing it change. I'm seeing it change. It's so fun getting to experience this through you because it's been, it's been so long since I've worked with Warbler the first time and I remember how much my mind was just blown by how awesome this stuff was. Right? It's like it's to experience it all over again. Big old, big old floppy bit of black cheese. A little bit more floppy. A little more? Alright. Yep. You, it should be, I shouldn't say sticking to the paper because obviously you don't want it to stick stick to the paper, but it should be a little bit difficult to pick up. Man, can I just say, in this in this like skill exchange that we're doing, I'm making out like a bandit. I've learned like I've learned like three or four different new materials from you. Oh, I'm so glad I can help. This is sick. So I'm I'm starting to get I'm starting to get a pretty nice like pinch yeah, around it. Great. Is that sort of the right distance that I should be trimming it? Like, I've, I've, I've got a little bit left, yeah. but I'm worried about going much closer than that. Yeah, you don't want to go too close to where you split it. Um, you want to go... You want to go close enough to where... It'd be like if you're doing a French seam. You want to trim it close enough to where you're, dis- you're getting rid of most of the bulk, but you don't want to trim it too close to where you're going to break that seam. Yeah, 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 yeah. That- Mm-hmm. Yours looks like a little Oreo or a moon pie or something. Oh, right. Like a like a <laughs> like a big macaroon or something. <laughs> I want to eat it. Yeah. So you said that next we're gonna smash the sides in. The best way to do it is to you just kind of put divots, like um, little tracks. You yeah. Smash it down, and then you go back in and then smooth those out because oh. you're essentially 
pushing it down and then spreading it out so it smooths out a little bit better. Oh, I yes. see! Oh my god, that's so cool! Yes! Water is amazing! Why did no one tell me? Warble <laughs> <laughs> <Where laughs> is awesome! I think I've got a pretty handsome little hockey puck. It's... It's gonna look so freaking good once it's all cleaned up. That's like... Yes! Oh my gosh, that looks so cool! Kayla left me with some homework, not least of which was pouring the second resin manticore into my silicon mold, then tidying everything up, sealing the warbler with some wood glue, before attaching everything together with some epoxy resin, and painting over it. I used some black spray paint just as a base coat, and then I went back in with some Molito liquid chrome and a dry brushing technique to try and bring out a really bright silver colour, while still keeping it nice and dark in the recesses. Now, let's get Kayla back on the line, show her the end results, and wrap up this long and rambling video. So when we last spoke, you left me with a little bit of homework to finish it off. So since then, I have I poured the resin for the second mandicore head, I sealed the warbler, I glued it all together, and I've just now finished painting it, so... Yay, I'm so excited, I can't wait to see it. da na 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 Oh my goodness! Right? Oh, that looks so real! It's got- Oh, oh my, my gosh, it's so shiny! Uh, I guess by way of, like, thoughts from me, I'm really glad that you told me to try dry brushing it. Because previously yes. when I've used- Previously when I've used this silver ink, so I've just poured that straight into my airbrush, to my mind it looks like an aged metal pommel. I'm so happy it's with it. It's perfect and perfect. Yeah, yes, perfectly imperfect is the perfect way to put it. Oh, actually, I might as well grab the sword now. Oh my That's gosh. sick. That's uh, sick. That looks so great. This was like, this was like baby's first molding and casting adventures for me. And I'm really glad that I had you to step me through it. I'm so pleased I was able to help because you deserve a huge pat on the back because that looks amazing. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't really thought of what else to do in the intro apart from, I guess, the fairly bog standard. Um... Now, if people want to find more of you, they can look over on your YouTube channel, which I will link down below. And where, where can we find more McNerdy? More McNerdy Instagram and, um... I've been being coached through the whole TikTok thing. Ooh, exciting. So I can I can encourage everyone that if they are interested in more um How do I how do I even sum up your channel apart from like crazy builds? Oh like, my god, I dread this question because it's like I don't know I don't even know how to describe it. Um I make nerdy things out of recycled materials and a lot of my builds tend to be like larger than life, I guess. No, oh, thank you so much. I really, really had a lot of fun with this, so. I did too, thank you. I'm just trying to think if there's anything else that I need to do before I stop all the recording. Look, I don't I don't want the video to run any longer than it currently is, so uh <laughs> We're just gonna leave it at that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's one take. One take.